Journey Chato. Hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? Somehow, I have no idea why, the video is pretty dark to me. Uh, are you seeing clearly? Because it's pretty dark to me, to the point that I really can't see much. Uh, I see myself, I see the posters. But, yeah, it's really weird. It is kind of dark. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Hmm. Only a bit dark. I have no idea why would that be. Let's see. Uh, white balance. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through options here and I really can't see why it would... But you guys can like see it clearly, right? I really have no idea why this is so dark. <laughs> Ooh, we have effects, guys. see oh yeah I have discovered the wonders of stream effects Auto. Mm. yeah it looks better to me at least Maybe it's because the light in my room, I guess. Let's try this. Let's see how this goes for now. How are you guys doing in this fine Saturday? It's probably lighting. Yeah, when, I, when I'm like really uh, uh, close to the light, it, it's like fine. So I think it's the lighting in my room. So I'll try to stay near the light so you guys can see if it doesn't make um, if it doesn't make for a good video I can I can get this how do you call luminati in English I have no idea how uh, well anyways I have this light on my desk that I can use to make it better Lamp. Yeah, I have this lamp. I have a lamp on my desk that I can use to make it better. So what's in for today? Let's see. <clears throat> um, so uh, the, the idea for today was uh, originally take a look at this PCB, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was the Chinyu that sent me this PCB. It's a played PCB. The problem with this one is that it has a bus um, USB connector. Let's see if you guys can see this uh, clearly. Let me put it against the light and uh, switch cameras. There you go. So, uh, see, it has this bust USB connector and uh, I have taken a look at it with um, magnifying glasses and it worked, it's, it's just fine as far as pads go, but uh, we have to clean it, uh, remove the, um, the flux and most of the solder here. Uh, I have to admit though, I don't want to flame him or anything but um, the solder job is not the best one, right? Uh, so the guy, the, the genius should uh, work on his soldering shenanigans, but well, it works, it works. 
So that's what we are in for today. But first, I think this won't take long because um, there are no lift lifted pads and uh, this looks like it won't need much work on it so it would be quite a um, it will be quite a brief stream so first we are going to take a look at this shipment that arrived to me from the proxy from US closer which is uh, supposedly uh, I have an assembled shark proto that will probably be um, send your board to Gondo and he will judge you. Yeah, I mean uh, I will because that's what I do. I judge people. I'm, 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 I'm I like to judge people. Oh, uh, just kidding. Uh, now it's just that uh, I'll try to fix some of the problems with the solder here and I like to take the PCBs, your guys PCBs to take a look and show on streams because uh, you guys can see uh, examples of what to and what not to do on soldering and boards and stuff. That's not, I'm, I'm not, you know, flaming uh, the team for this. I mean, he doesn't work with this as I do, so I can't pretty much, uh, you know, tell bad things but uh, all I want to do is show you guys what a good and what a bad solder job would look like so you guys can improvise so you guys can uh, make your own boards better the problem with this one though it, it, it doesn't have a bad solder job per se uh, he did solder all joints so let me change the camera again Okay, so I can already see that the back camera is way better and way clearer than the front camera. And I have no idea why that is. I frankly have no idea why. It is probably because the front camera has this protective... Um, Uh, okay, so I removed the front camera protection. I need to buy a, a new one anyway, so let's see if it's better now. Yeah, it's too dark, but yeah, okay. So uh, a bad uh, solder job, uh, it, this is not a bad, the protecting glass. Yeah, I have this protecting glass on it. Uh, uh, and I doubt it's glass, but anyway, so, uh, but that was not the problem. Oh well. I'll have to just uh, toy with the configuration and stuff, but the problem here is that he used too much shot solder. You see, the, the solder joints, they look um, they look like blobs. Uh, so you guys can see that the solder, uh, it, they look like balls, you know, they look fat. When in actuality, what you want, uh, which is what I told you guys in like a past stream, is that you want you want that um, tent shape, like circus shape, right? You want something like this. Uh, there is no, there is not like much solder, but you, you don't want something like that's a, that's a ball of solder. Hey, the chino, um, I'm 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 showing you guys what not to do on a solder job based on yours. I'm sorry, but I had to do it. Anyways, uh, so we will take a look at this guy. <laughs> then again, it won't probably be like. Um, it won't probably take much time because this PCB here, it probably just it probably just needs to solder a new connector, and that's what we are going to do: clean it and remove the remove the 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 solder the solder flux. But it looks pretty fine to me, actually. It looks okay. So that's what we are going to do today. But first, we are going to take a look at what I received today, which is. Let me take. <clears throat> Which is this here? So, this is a big shipment from the proxy, uh, and it has supposedly Gateron pinks, uh, MX dark blues. Um, a shark proto that's going to be probably the final version of the GB. 
and uh, and the assay oblivion key set. I think that's what is here. So that's I'm going to do a, 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 a quick unboxing of this, and then we are going to take a look at the PCB. I wanted to do this yesterday, but the Correios, the post company, said that I wasn't home when I really was here waiting for them. And out of the blue, they they showed I say Oblivion. Yeah, I uh, Arctic. He uh, he PM'd me with a. By the way, all items here are from Mac Market. None of these are from vendors. They are all from Mac Market. Um, Arctic PM'd me with this SA Oblivion. Uh, according to the seller, it does have a little bit of shine on some keys, but it was 150 bucks. Uh, so it was pretty much GB price and has all the keys for a full size. So really can't complain on that. So let's take a look at this and see if it really is. You know, a full say Oblivion set today, uh, I have seen people wanting 300 plus for this. So uh, of course, brand new and yada, 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 but I'm fine with a little bit of shine. And uh, Oblotsky, he did say Oblivion was coming in a high profile next year, but uh, frankly, I didn't want to wait. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, the post GB prices are ridiculous. Yeah, that's Oblivion, man. Oblivion is one of those key uh, key sets, uh, or better, uh, color sets that uh, you know people are just all over with. Together with uh, SA Godspeed, which sells for ridiculous prices right now, and. Uh, you know, I'm not criticizing the prices. If someone wants to sell and if someone wants to buy, that's okay. So GMK Oblivion, I did enter GMK Oblivion for a base kit too. Uh, a kit base kit, I guess. So US Closer sent me on these, uh, these bags, USPS bags. Let's see what happens. So there are a lot of stuff here. Okay. Oh, okay. So I think by the looks of it that this is the PCB. Hey Akibs, what's up? How are you doing man? So this looks like the PCB. Let's see. Oh yeah. So this is the fully assembled Shark Proto, and this will probably be the GB version, apart from from some like basic modifications. And man, does it look good! It looks fantastic, Omega. Oh Let me uh, uh, change the uh, camera. Because this one doesn't look good, but the other one looks better. Okay guys, so here you are. This is a fully assembled Shark PCB. Uh, there are little modifications that will take part. Like these bypass capacitors here, they will be... Uh, uh, they will be uh, closer to the microprocessor as they should be a goofed on this. I really did goof on this bypass capacitors. They should be closer to the MCU as they will in the final version. But uh, there are some modifications in the encoder nets. But, uh, but just on the nets, the position would be the same. But yeah, this is the final shark version. And here is the, this is the LED MOSFET driver. So, yep. And boy, does it look good. I am really impressed by this. 
the solder job it looks good it looks I mean I, I, I won't lie it it's not the best solder job that I have ever seen but uh, it is good for the price it is really good for the price this was done in um, uh, my phone is vibrating from messages from I think my dad sorry guys um, this is um, this was done in I think PCB way and boy does it look good so yeah this is your the final shark PCB version the uh, connector looks really good too so yeah this is what it will look like and it's it's awesome frankly I I, I really couldn't ask for a better for a better job did you use PCBA from them? Um, I did. I actually did. Uh, we ordered five or ten assembled protos from PCBWay to test them. And uh, this is it. I will take a look at it. I will load the firmware on it and test. The, the final... Um, the final... There is... I am seeing a little flux on the bottom but that's not that's not the end of the world anyways uh, uh, we did use PCBA from them to test their quality and it's approved I mean it, it is good solder solder joints look shiny the solder quantity they use is spot-on um, yeah I mean this is awesome this is really awesome their, their stuff is really good Mr. Keep send Gondo messages top to get the PCB. Oh, Keeps Keeps already has an unbuilt one and he will get a built one, but the built one he will get will be from me. I will build it myself and send him one. But yeah, it looks good. Um, it is fine. Uh, the the assemble is is good. The PCB quality is also pretty good. Uh, the the silk screen is amazing, uh, even with the little uh, even with the little components. It's awesome, really awesome, really awesome stuff. By the way, uh, the Brazilian guys that uh, ordered the Shark PCB from me. Uh, we'll get them from me. I will send them from Brazil. Uh, they won't get it from Steve on the USA. This is to uh, this is to this is to shape on shipping, right? So I will ship from the US proxy for to me and then to me for you guys. And uh, yeah, they also sent like the some extra components but the components don't have labels though labels though okay so done I didn't get the invoice from the BRGB oh uh, you did get one uh, so you must be the guy missing I sent invoices to everyone but one invoice is missing payment so uh, I think that was you uh, I will resend the invoice. Don't worry. So this is it. I really like what the proxy did, though. Uh, I did order like the extra packaging. You can uh, you can tell them to to uh, like make better packaging. Uh, I paid I think a dollar for, it, but they did use this. USPS bubble wrap and it's pretty good I must say <clears throat> US closer has given me no problems so far so yeah Ooh. okay so one of them opened One of the 
Could you? I have no idea what this is. <clears throat> okay, so in this package we have what looks like the Oblivion numpad set. Let me show you this. So this looks like the Oblivion numpad set and oh my god does it look good. Let me open this. Yeah, this is awesome. Really good stuff. Double shot. Original SP double shot. It's even better than what I expected. Oh yeah. Awesome. Also, I got here, the, the package that burst open was uh, the Gateron Pinks, so I need to retake those, but they really do look good, those Gat Pinks. <laughs> and their packaging sounds awesome though, a little bit of pink. Yeah, I can hear pink, not as much as on an original Get Yellow, but yeah, lots of pinks, lots of pink noise, but nothing that a lube won't take care of. Yeah. Okay. Will you put it on a shark or in another board, the Oblivion? Another one. Another board, uh, the shark. Uh, I think I will put the shark on a... I don't know which key set I'll put the shark on, frankly. This PCB here, uh, I ordered it, or better yet, Steve ordered it. So we could test the firmware and uh, test the build quality. So I haven't thought that far. but. Probably I will build this with um... Yeah, the thing is I was waiting for this um, The shark case the low-profile shark case that I designed But midway through uh, it didn't meet MAQ. So I don't have one of those with me. So I Think this PCB will be a test only and I will wait until I can get a, a Case and a plate so I can build it and uh, as soon as I do, I will stream it. But yeah, as of now, I don't have the case and the plate to do it. But yeah, anyways, uh, this this SA Oblivion here, I, I will probably use it with... Um, I think I will get an Austin. So I'll probably use it with the Austin. So let's wait for that. Steve also sent me one of his cables. Awesome stuff, by the way. His cable. Really pretty. Let me change the camera. So an USB-C cable. Really good, really well built, and the uh, the the electric the the, the insulation here. I, um, what's what's this one called? I don't remember in English. The thermal thermal tube. The thermal tube here. Awesome, good, good color. Yeah, it is amazing stuff. Dani Freitas, boa noite. E aí, boa noite. These. I'll need to count these after, 
to see if everything arrived okay. So yeah, these get pinks, uh, they are really pretty, really good. It's a really beautiful pink, light pink color. Really like it. I really like it. I like it. Does it have a custom spring? It does look like it have a golden spring inside there. Nice stuff, really nice stuff. Yeah, you it won't close. I have no idea what happened here. Oh well. So let's package this one. Uh, da -da, those are one of the best switches that I have ever used. They do have golden springs. I love get pinks. Dude, they're amazing. They're beautiful. Uh, the pink, the pink shade that they use, the like light pink. It's it's beautiful. Uh, I will loop them with two of five, I guess. Um, but I don't. I don't know where I will use it still. I think I'll use it with uh, Red Sam. I have this Tina that I got from Arctic, by the way, uh, and I, I I I did enter Red Samurai from from Mestrop, and uh, maybe I'll build it with Red Sam and Tina. Amazing. How much to get pinks gold for? I have no idea. Uh, I think it was like a special version. Uh, Keeps can Keeps can confirm it. It was a special GB version, like the Linears. But um, I don't know, I don't remember what was the GB price, but I did, I do remember that I paid really close to GB price on them. Uh, actually, I think I paid the actual GB price, so yeah. Okay, dude, SA Oblivion looks fucking awesome. So here are the alphas. Tô com 10 Holy Pandas que o Kibbs mandou. Compensa mais comprar 74 para usar no teclado? Cara, Pandas é, 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 é massa. É massa. Eu acho que compensa muito. O problema é que é meio carinho, ainda mais com esse dólar absurdo. Mas eu acho que vale a pena. So, Dani Freitas asked, uh, I have 10 Holy Pandas that Mr. Kibbs sent me. Uh, do you think it's worth to buy 74 more to use in a keyboard? Yes, I think. Uh, Holy Pandas, they are awesome. Although, there is a little problem which was present in the original pandas is that um, the stock, uh, stock spring is not the best one. So uh, yeah, I would recommend that you got uh, a good springs to change them because stock springs, they're not nice actually, they're not good. Uh, mine, I will lube them, spring swap and probably film them. I, I bought some films from TX keyboards, some switch films, and I'll probably film them too. So let's take a look at the SA Oblivion Alphas. And oh yeah, they look they look amazing. The, the seller did say that there was considerable shine on the keys. I can't see it. I really can't. I really can't see any shine or any irregularities. I mean, they are pretty shiny, is that? But it, then again, the whole thing is, I have no idea if that is I mean, he said some of them looked imperfect or had nicks and dimes on them. And I can't, I really can't find any problem with them. I'm really happy with this. 
I'm I'm genuinely really happy with with this. I mean, for 150, I guess I paid 150 bucks. Yeah, awesome. Really good stuff. So these were the alphas, Oblivion alphas. Let me put them in their bag and let's see the mods. That's gold for 150. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. He did say some keys have imperfections, nicks and dimes. I can't find any. I frankly can't find any. And at this point for the price, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely amazed at it. I mean, they look awesome. It really look good. I'm happy with this. I saw one but was at the bottom. Oh okay. So that's that's okay. I mean if it's on the bottom it won't show. Well, let's take a look at these mods. Okay, so the modifiers they look the same thing than the alphas, they look pretty amazing. Okay, so the shift has a considerable shine to it. But I think it looks beautiful, I mean. Okay, so this key here has this little scratch, but I can't see it. You you can't you can't see it if you don't like take it against light, so nope. Tem como montar um teclado sem perceber? Sim, é os hand wires. Ok, so the shift looks really good, no problems with it. And this purple, oh my god, the purple. The purple looks amazing. The purple of this set, it's just. It's mesmerizing, look at this. Yeah. Okay, so I have been I I have wanted this kit for so long, and uh, I'm I'm you know it can get better than this. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy at how it turned out, and yeah, I'm really happy with this. Really, really happy with this. The dish on essay set. I love essay. I love high profiles. The only uh, uh, not high profile that I really like is XDA. Is XDA high profile? I don't think so. XDA is like DSA, right? So yeah. But uh, I do have MT3 and uh, MT3. And SA, I can't decide which one feels better, to be honest. But uh, I really like high profile stuff. Not a fan Jim K. No, uh, it's not that I'm a hater or anything, but they don't feel good. At least to me. I, I, I'm not comfortable typing on Jim K as I am typing on uh, DSA. The space bar does have a little bit of shine. But it's really detailed and it's not like anything major. Um, I'll, I will have to fill it with um, some cotton or anything to, to dampen some of the high pitch sounds because this is hollow. See the, the space bar? It's completely hollow. This is normal on, on SA, by the way. Uh, the plastic is thick, but the uh, it's completely hollow. So people will generally fill it with something uh, more 
often than not it will be cotton so put some cotton here to you know make it a little bit heavier and but you see that it does have a little bit of a shine here on this side right so it looks really opaque here and here it shines but then again it doesn't have not a problem with me I am astounded at this mad freaking props to Arctic to Arctic he just PM'd me right away and hey there's this SA that's coming on and uh, this SA post on Mac Market and I was like And I was like, really, I'm, I'm really happy about this. But uh, Mr. Keeps uses a magic eraser to get the shine more opaque. I'm happy with it, man. Frankly, to me, not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. So now I have something that I have been after for a long, long time. OTRDL. Oh, hey, what's up? OTRDL. How are you doing, man? SA Oblivion is about the only SA set I would buy. Dude, SA Oblivion is a dream of mine since uh, it ever launched. Uh, it, this set has, it's, it's, it was launched, uh, I think, uh, two years ago or something. And um, by the time I say launched, uh, I was already deep into the hobby. Uh, I've been in the hobby for like four years or something, but uh, for Brazil reasons, I have never had like high-end stuff. Uh, the, 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 the SA sets that I have were um, knockoff Miami Night. I, I, I had, I, I, for two years, my two mechanical keyboards were two modded end pros that I had that I heavily modded them with my own PCBs and uh, I removed the PCB and put in on my own PCB that I designed at the time and uh, I had uh, everything from different layout to multi-layout support and the PCB that I, I used on that um, on those end pros would actually become uh, Keeps and Arctic PCB uh, so these PCBs had they, they really hit home with me but um, SA and, and I have loved SA for a long time and I, I, I this set was really a dream of mine I had three dream sets that I really wanted the SA Deep Space SA Oblivion and SA F22 F22 I was able to buy from KP Defense, I guess uh, it reopened and I have it here I will uh, I will use that on the MK2 on the KBD8X MK2 um, this one I think I'll use with Austin if everything goes okay and I receive an Austin I think I'll use this and um, and the desiccated space I'm already using on the uh, XD64. Frankly, though, for me that's end game. I don't really need any more boards. I would love to get SA camping. Not my thing. I don't like the colorway, the camping colorway in general. Uh, it's good. I mean, I'm not. I'm not shitting on it. It's good. It's awesome. But that's not something that I would buy. But I can understand why it appeals to so much people. <clears throat> End game. Now I make my own boards. Yep, that's exactly what happens. So, uh, this is a switch that I have been wanting for a long, long time, which is a Max Dark Blues. Uh, you guys can't see this, but so here we are. I bought this off of Make Market, and uh, these they are amazing. Uh, these were a limited edition. Uh, they they like were produced. Uh, very very few units were produced of this and they were not produced like um you couldn't buy the switches you had to buy they came 
in, I think it was three keyboards in Germany or something. And I had this friend of mine, German, Jan. Uh, I don't think Jan uh, is here because we lost contact. But anyway, he did let me use this and it felt fucking awesome. And I really wanted this switch for a long, long time. And I managed to grab some. And boy, do they sound good. Uh, they are uh, pretty much like MX, um, I'd say normal blues but the, uh, they are still clickies, but the click, it's uh, the tactile sensation is awesome. Uh, I shit you not, it really does, uh, uh, it, 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 it really has um, holy panda feels to it. I, I'm, it. It's really good tactile feeling. It's, it's, it's a light switch, but it's good. The, the special thing with this is that the feeling is awesome. It's really smooth and it uh, it has this really awesome and gentle click. Uh, where's the microphone on my phone? I think it's right here. See, it's 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 really delicate and it sounds amazing. MX Dark Blues are similar to MX Whites. Yeah, that, that's what he told me. I have never tried MX Whites, so I'm not sure. But I did buy these for an amazing price. An amazing price. And the tactility on these, I might have overstated. It, it, this does not have a holy panda feel to it, but it does have an amazing tactility. It's like the, the right combination between sharp and long. Yeah, it, this is this is just heaven. Those are absolutely incredible switches. Throw the SA camps on them, you won't be disappointed. MX Dark Blues are very similar to MX Whites. They are very pleasant activity now over the top and not as pleasant and clean. More of a solid click rather than a standard redly blue kick. Exactly. It's like a very, very pleasant click. And uh, I, I'm not a big fan of clickies myself. Um, the only clickies that I have are uh, box jades that I'll be using in a future build that are right there. But these ones, they are, they are honestly the, some of the best clickies that I have ever tried. Amazing. This is this is really amazing to me. This is just. And what what really uh, um, what I wasn't expecting though is that uh, the the get pinks guy also sent me some uh, golden springs and he even did write hey stock springs are pretty old so if they're too bad there are about 9065g springs i had spare he did write a little letter to me and um I mean, I wasn't expecting this. This wasn't on a deal. The, the springs, they weren't on the deal. And he just sent me this out of his own heart. I mean, he really sent this as a act of good faith. And man, does this make me feel good. Um, Punchy springs are very good. Those springs are fantastic for you. What do you mean by punchy springs, man? Sorry, I, I, I don't recognize the term punchy. But anyways, the, the guy that sent me the dark blues, he also sent me some spare uh, golden, uh, um, golden springs that I... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed by this. I'm really astounded by, th by, by the fact that he sent extra extra springs and then again they weren't on a deal I didn't pay for those I paid for the for the uh, switches only I have five uh, 
Punch is the manufacturer. They are the string manufacturer. Okay, they were a lot with Gebron. I have six, five or six packs, but didn't use them. Need to try them soon. Oh, that's awesome. They are really nice. I have used some before and the, and have always been very happy with them. Yeah, uh, so far I have tried only Sprit and TX strings. Uh, I have tried also, but I think those Skiv sent to me uh, some I think it was KB Defense Golden ones that keep sent me or something like that. Also awesome stuff. So yeah, I don't remember the guy's name now, but I will definitely send him a very, very heartwarming thank you for the springs. This is indeed a pleasant surprise and um, yeah, this, this makes me have faith in the community again. Okay, so maybe I will try some punchy springs in the future. So yeah, guys, that's what that's what I had for unboxing today. Is there any more that you guys would want to see? Pretty amazing stuff. By the way, uh, Brazilian, the Brazilian guys always uh, keep asking me, uh, people in the Brazilian Discord always keep asking me which, which is the best proxy. And I can definitely say that it's US Closer. I did try with shop fans uh, for, I don't remember how many times I used shop fans and they did goof up some uh, orders of mine. So um, definitely used US Closer. Price wise, uh, I have felt they are the same, but to me, in my opinion, US Closer service is leaks apart from shop fence. Looks like you have fun for days, man. Yeah, not, not exactly. I mean, I, I still have to have boards with those, right? I bought those when the dollar was uh, 360 highs. So uh, I got really got my money's worth. But um, not that the dollar is 420 or something. I, uh, uh, I really can't do much. Hello. 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 Okay, so someone called me, I have no idea who it was, and when people call me, stream freezes. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, um, let's see, looks like I have fun for days, these are really nice, I have used some before and I always, yeah, I'll, I'll try those in, 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 a, in the future, when I have the money and the time. So, uh, yeah, so I will start uh, fixing the PCB, the Chinyu PCB, and is there any more things that you guys want to see before I start this? Do you know the weight of this package? I never used a proxy and I have no idea how much stuff would cost me to ship. Okay, so uh, proxy into Brazil has this little caveat, which is you always need to use ePacket. Why? Um, search for the the, the e packet history, but it's like a joint uh, effort between I think it was the USA and Taiwan or something. And uh, when it comes to Brazil, it has a really really low chance of being taxed. So it's a really really good and relatively cheap uh, way of sending stuff to Brazil and avoiding getting taxed. Uh, by the way, it's not like you're, uh, you know, frauding anything. No, uh, the, the taxing process works in some way that we frankly don't know how they pick stuff to tax. 
Um, what we officially know is that it's done by um, they cherry pick some packages to check, right? Uh, but what you have to do is uh, for the e-packet to work, you your package has to have less than two kilos. Yeah, less than two mm -hmm. kilos, and um, in order for you not to get taxed, you have to have what was the limit? I think it was fifty dollars, right? The limit is fifty dollars. So that's what uh, that's what you need to do in practical terms you your package has to have 1.8 1.7 kilos because all the packaging does add 200 or 300 grams so yeah that's how you do if you need any any help with uh, proxying and other shenanigans that you know i always have stuff lying there on on my proxy that i that i that i bring here so we can you know just uh, uh, uh how do you call uh hasha hasha fred in english we can split we can split the the, the proxy prices dollar quatro quinze yep dollar quatro quinze esta porra split yeah sure we can split Okay, so let's take a look at this PCB. So, what I'm doing now is uh, I will take uh, the 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 solder iron and the new connector that we will use here. First things first, I will try to I have to clean this first. I have to take out the excess tin because I think that not everyone was in the stream when I showed it, but uh, the, the PCB that needs fixing is this one. It's a plate. It looks pretty good, no problems. Uh, I don't know what happened to the connector. The team wants me to replace this connector, and that's what we are doing today. Uh, apart from the overall looks of it, uh, I have looked, I have taken a look with uh, magnifying glasses, and um, pad-wise, it does look intact. I mean, no pads are lifted, and everything seems to be okay so we're just going to uh, replace the um, replace the connector um, and um, see if it works but before that you guys can see that it needs a lot of cleaning so first of all we will clean this uh, take out the excess uh, solder flux and try and change the connector awesome let's do it let me take stuff <clears throat> so how are you guys doing in this awesome saturday afternoon Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you guys my electronic components collection. So it's this three stuff here and boxes and boxes of components. So these are the resistors, good stuff. I have something around 3K plus. Uh, let's see, where are the connectors? Not right here. Gundo shop, yeah. I work with this, man. I work repairing electronics, so I need those. No, this is not it. Let's see this. No, this is not it, too. Let's see. I think it's here. The connectors are here, or in the other clear one. But. No, not here. So they must be on the other one. Yep, here they are. 
Label it. Yeah, I don't have time for labeling, man. So these are the connectors. The Chino, he had this sort of luck that I had the connectors on hand. Uh, this generally does not happen. Connectors, they are pretty hard to come by, especially USB stuff. But for his case, I had the connectors on hand. Oh, by the way. Uh, these components that I have here will be also used to build the new Arctic and Keeps PCBs. I just need to buy the microcontrollers, which I don't have here, here with me right now. But yeah. So, ah, I, also, I also have to take the solder iron, which is not there, it's here. The solder tin is there, yes it is. Yes, it is. Okay, I don't need anything more. Let's set it up. Let me take the wet sponge. <clears throat> okay, do I have solder wick? I think I do. I'll need it. So the desolder machine will have to do. Let me turn that stuff on. Here you are. No, you're not. Okay. So let's take a look at this and see how bad it is.
Okay. So then again, no problem, no damage to pads. So that's a good sign. Dechino, what what happened to this connector? Did you try to desolder it? Why did you try to desolder the connector? Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, so I've tinned them, cleaned a little bit of the old solder, and now I have to turn on the uh, desolder machine. But for that, I'll need to use this cable here. Yes, I did put too much solder, then I tried to desolder it. Yeah, that's that's completely normal. Don't don't sweat it. From the looks of it, no problems there. We will just need to remove excess flux, excess solder, and you know it will be good. The problem is I don't have any cotton balls anymore. That's bad. Um Let's see if these will do the job. Now drink the IPA, yeah. Drink the IPA to clean my soul, right? Waiting for the, the soldering machine to hit 400 degrees. Four hundred is probably too much. Let's use three eighty. Three seventy is good. Okay, let's clean the tip, awesome, huh. okay, so let's do this. The right thing, thing to use here would actually be a uh, solder wick. Problem is I don't have any with me now. I have to buy more. But since these are fairly big through holes, they're coming right off okay. The 
little ones will be a little bit of an issue. These ones I'll need some new. Better than a 15 high solder sucker. Yep. You have to have the right tools for the job, man. soldering machine is cool and all but it does have the problem of the heat so you'll have to be very careful with it because it can bust the pads with its heat okay so last one yep last one I discovered this the hard way. Yep. Don't beat yourself up too much, man. Nope, it's still not there. Connector should fit right in. There you go. It does fits a okay. Yep, there it is. Now all we need to do is clean the flux with IPA and resolder the new connector, man. Don't sweat it. Uh, all part of the learning process with all made mistakes. Yeah, you know, the thing about electronics is that uh, having a PhD on electronics is nice. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you feel good. What the Monster truck entering my watching the stream guys okay so let's clean it that's actually a beetle that's an old beetle oh yeah let me try to fix my car now that's actually what's happening it's my neighbor I'm not even kidding Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so here is the difference that the IPA can make. The sound of a good old Fusca. Yep. Famoso Fuscão. So here it is. You can see clearly see the part that I have cleaned and the part that's still uh, has flux on it. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to clean it and I can turn this off now. And yeah, now it's pretty much, uh, so as I was saying, electronics has this really good uh, experience factor to it in the sense that uh, having formal studies, I mean, uh, bachelor's, university shenanigans in electronics is nice. Yeah, but definitely it's good. Uh, it's nice. Uh, it's a nice way to, to make money, but it does have this, um, how can I say this? It does have this experience factor, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, you, can, um, you can learn how to design components and circuits in university, but at the end of the day, having the experience of ordering hmm. okay man so unfortunately it does appear you busted a pad there it really does appear that you busted a pad there oh yeah Okay, so let me show this to you guys. Let me try and clean it a little better. Okay, so the plot thickens, guys. We have a bust lifted pad that we will need to probably jump in order for, for this to work. Okay, so now that the connector area is clean, we can take a little bit of a better look at it. And um, let me get the multimeter to show you guys what happened. Okay, where's my multimeter now? Okay, so uh, can I zoom? Let's see. The camera can't zoom. Camera. I have no idea. Huh. Yeah, the camera can't zoom. But. As you guys should be able to see, this pad here is bust, it's lifted, right? The problem is that, and let's see if I can make this better for you guys. The tracing that goes to this pad also was ripped. You see that there is a trace here that... Okay, the camera is trolling me. You see that there is this trace here that goes here and then here, right? So it's also busted. 
So a little bit of the trace was ripped apart here, you see? So even if I solder this here, it won't work because this trace is broken. So we will probably need to do one or two jumpers to fix this. On the other side, um, everything looks... I mean... On the other side, there also is a busted pad, which is this one here. But this one, if I remember correctly, this middle pad is the ID pad. I really don't remember. No, it's not. It does have a trace to it. Hmm. Yeah, so I really am not sure anymore if we can fix this because we need to find where where every pad should go and we will probably need to make those jumpers now. Yeah. Also, in order to clean this, I will probably need to use the toothbrush uh, technique, which I relent so much, which I loathe so much, but it will be needed in this case. No helping it. So let's do this. Let me turn the solder iron on. <clears throat> Ryuji, hey, what's up, man? Hey, Gondo, is it easy to make a wireless mod on a keyboard? Hmm. You know, I wouldn't say it's easy. No, that's not the right word. Um, the problem with wireless is that it is generally you, it generally uses Bluetooth, right? And to use Bluetooth, you need to use serial communication, the RX and TX. So to make that mod on a keyboard, you would need that the microprocessor has the TX and RX pins free, so you can use them. Um, so. That's what you need. You need those pens to be free. Um, also, the Bluetooth module is not the best one to work with hardware-wise. It has lots of... Um, it needs lots of pins, bypass capacitors. So, I wouldn't say it's easy. No, I wouldn't. It is possible, though. But it's not easy. No, I wouldn't say it's easy. Why would you do you need to make a one of those mods to a keyboard? Looks like the middle pin goes to D49 and R2. So let's see. D49 and R2. Okay, so D49 is here. Uh, I'd have to take a good look at the schematic to see what those are for. Do you have the schematic on hand, Evil?
Okay, so I need a little help from you. I need to know where this pin goes. The this pin here. See that it's busted. This pad here. Let the camera focus. Looking at the plate PCB at the moment. Oh, awesome. This pin here, see that it's busted? I need to know where it is connected because I will need to jump this and I don't want to read the traces. So I really need to go where to know where this guy goes. If it could help me, that would be a huge, huge help. That's GND. Oh, okay. So that's GND. Yeah, that's why the whole pad is busted, see, because it's connected to the copper plane. Hmm. Okay, what's the nearest GND pad? It's here, right? Okay, so I will jump that one to this guy here, and that should work nicely. See? So I will jump this pin that's busted to this GND here, which is the I2C, I believe, GND, and it should work. So that's what we are going to do. Let's just solder the connector in. So this other pin that's busted, no other way around it. Oh, I think I fucked this up. Okay, awesome. So what I did was, let me show you guys. Let me take the pliers. I'll have to take the pliers. Where are them? Oh, by the way. I have it. I just hate it. It's good for fast repairs, but when you need something a little bit better done, no way around it. The machine is the better one. It's the best one. Okay. Let me show you guys what I did in a second. I'll just, I'm just trying to lift this little guy here. Okay. 
Okay, I think I did it. Because the pin is busted, it didn't enter the it didn't enter the hole correctly and now it's okay, so awesome. So what I did was this uh, since the pad is busted See that the G as you will said that's the GND pad. See the one that's not soldered. Since this one is busted, I broke out the pin on the uh, connector. Where is it? There you go. See the pin there? Let me see this. Here. See this pin here? comes directly from the uh, USB connector. Let me take, the, the camera won't focus, goddammit. Here, so I will solder this, I will jump this to GND. Uh, there should be a DN, uh, this GND here. Uh, I think it's this one. So what I'll do is I'll directly solder a wire between this guy here and this pad here. That is what I'll do now. So first, I will need a, um, I'll need the jumper wire. Okay, so here it is. But first, before doing that, I will clean this board. What's the problem with this board is that since all components are through hole, uh, my paper, it won't clean between the pads. So I will have to do that horrible, horrible technique that I freaking hate, but there's kind of no way around it this time, which is using a brush. So let me show you guys how it is done. So what you do is you get a toothbrush. Where's the tooth? Where's that toothbrush that I use for that kind of thing? Yep, I left it here. So you take a toothbrush, preferably the clean one, right? Old toothbrush. By the way, keeps. If you're looking, this is the right way to do the toothbrush. Uh, and then you take a container, preferably glass, okay? Glass container because IPA is known to deteriorate plastic. So, first of all, we need to wash our toothbrush. Awesome. And now we, let me put you guys in a better view here. Okay. Yep. And now we take our PCB and we spill the IPA on it. And you have to be very generous with this IPA because it needs to, to 
to seep in through all the little holes, little spaces there. And it is pretty much done. Let's see. Yep, no more solder flux traces here. There is not much flux in this side as all components are on the other one. But I do see this little yellow traces of flux here. I think it must have spilled maybe. Okay. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Now that it's clean, we take a paper and the problem with this technique is that it spills the solder floats all over the PCB, so you need to take it off. So now we clean it with a paper. Hobble or something. You don't want to brush it with the paper, like clean it, because it is already clean. You want, though, is to um, remove the excess from the PCB. Okay, so I will show you how this turns out in a moment. Maybe another brush will do this PCB more justice, yeah. Paper is good in this situation because it is highly absorbent, so it will help with our objective of retaining and removing all of the IPA that's, that contains excess flux. Okay, yep, that's as good as it can get. 
The problem with this technique is that it uh, distributes and spills all the flux around the PCB, all over the PCB. So if you guys check it, uh, this PCB is a good example because it is white. So it is very, very easy to see, uh, um, you know, dust and impurities. So if you guys see down here where like the PCB is plain and there, no, there are no components, it's shiny, it's clean. But when we get up there, you can see you can clearly see that the flux is still there. It's just dissolved, right? So this technique does clean flux. Yeah, it does. It removes like the great majority of the flux volume, but it spills the flux all over the PCB and on the top part as well. The right way to do this would be to use uh, the ultrasonic bath, but mine is broken. My ultrasonic, uh, I don't know how it's called in English, but my ultrasonic uh, uh, thing is broken. So I can't apply this right now, but this will do. But avoid this technique, the brush technique. I use this here because my paper wouldn't get in the 80 degree of the uh, little spaces between pads and uh, it won't work, it just won't work. So, uh, so I use this technique, but it's not good, avoid it. So now what we are going to do is jumping the GND from the connector to the copper plane of the PCB. To do this, I will use this, which is a standard, computer network cable but what's good about it is that it has these little wires inside it like come on okay okay so these wires are good to use as jumpers are you guys there uh, you guys haven't talked for a while Yep, okay, awesome. So I thought this stream I thought this stream went off for some reason. So that's okay. So what we are going to do now is jump the ground to the PCB. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so here it is. Little wire, two contacts. The first thing I will do, which is the most difficult one, would be to solder one of the ends of this guy to the pad of the connector, which we need to work on. Okay. So let's see, let's wait for it to heat up, okay, it is hot, a little bit of solder, okay, so here my motor skills come in play. So the problem here is that the connector is way too close to a capacitor and it's making my life harder, but we this takes patience and time, so let's do this slowly and it will work. Where the hell is the jumper? Is it stupid enough to let the jumper fall? Yes, I was. I'm a moron. Yay! Let's cut the other jumper. Okay, you. you. Okay. So, 
You know what would be good here? Some thermal shrink. Let me get it. Let me get the shrink. Okay, so now we are going to try to solder the the connector Why pad to the wire. Second take. So little wire, little solder. This should do it. And yep. Let's go. This will do. No, it won't. One more time. Gondola had to leave, but I'll watch my mini stream when I get back home. Okay. Uh, for some reason, Twitch is not sorry my streams, um, but I don't. So I don't know if it will be stored when you get back. But I'll tell you what happened afterwards. bit more solder many thanks my friend no problem dude Godspeed. Anything you need, just ask. This is a stable connection. Yes, it is. Okay, so what I've done is I have soldered our jumper to the uh, connector pin. There you go, see? So that pin is the GND. What I will do now is uh, use a little uh, Thermal shrink to ah, it disconnected. God damn it! It's not it's not sticking properly, which is a problem though. This is too hot. Let me take this out. This down a little. Yeah.
solder is not sticking to the pin. And that is not good. No bueno. Let's see if I can. Okay, I think now I did it. So I, I soldered the USB pin to the jumper and I think it's pretty stable now. And what I'll do now is put a little bit of shrink here to prevent the connection from shorting anything that shouldn't be shorted. I'll put some hot air here to shrink the heat shrink. And where is the... I generally use a lighter, but I don't know where my lighter is. Where's the lighter? So my lighter is missing. Well, it should do its job as it is right now. Let's just leave it as it is and when I find my lighter, I'll do it. So now I will solder it to the GND here. That's exposed here. Let's see, let's see. Awesome, is this GND? Yes, it is GND. And sorry. Okay. Awesome. So it is done. Okay. So there it is, guys. The jumper is done. Let me show you guys. So, um, there you go, the jumper uh, from the USB GND to the PCB GND and uh, it's soldered here, see this GND on the other side here. That's where it is soldered, show on the good camera. Yes, I think it has a little bit of a delay, I'm showing the good camera. See the GND there, these four pins are for I2C connections, right? Uh, and it has this pin here. And I don't think that you guys will be able to see like right in. There you go. See, so the the connector pin is, is connected to that jumper and it has a heat shrink over it. Uh, I have to find my hot air station. I have a hot air station here and I will, I'll, I'll use it to shrink the heat shrink and prevent anything from, uh, you know, um, um, that GND from shorting anything, but as it is right now, I think it works. It should work at least. So <clears throat> let's check this if it really works.
It's a big S. Let's wait for my computer to boot. I have to update my arch. It has been ages since I don't update. Gonna the stream went off for a second. Yeah, uh, it shows to me that sometimes the uh, that sometimes the um, the connection is poor. I have no idea why because the Wi-Fi is amazing where I am. Uh, I'm right next to the uh, router. So yeah, that's that's there's nothing much I can do there, man. I didn't hear you talking about the MC. I don't know what an MC is. Uh, you said that board has a big ass MC. I don't know what an MC is, man. Sorry. Okay, so let's go for our Josh's. Let me turn the sound on. Microcontroller, yeah, uh, they are all through holes, right? So everything is through hole. This is a through hole microcontroller. Uh, if I recall correctly, this is a 328P. Eighteen mega 328P. Yep, yeah, exactly. This is 328P, which is basically the same as 32U4, uh, but you know, it's uh, through hole. What the? F so let's plug in uh, PCB and hmm. I feel like something should light up. No. Nope. Yep, it's not working. And I have no idea why it's not working. All pads are okay. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, it does not work, guys. It looks like another another pen is busted. I don't know. I really don't know. Let's take the multimeter and test it. Metal pane is D plus, okay. Did you botch the middle pin? Uh, the middle pin looks awesome. The middle pin looks okay. Um, the only pin that looked bad was GND, but uh, I did short it to the uh, I2C GND, so it should be there, no problem. I will probably need to change this connector again, which I thought that will also bust it. No, the only one that's busted is the GND, see? See there? All four ones are okay, but the GND one is busted, so that's why I jumped it. Yeah, camera won't focus, awesome. Anyways, which one is um, which one is uh, five volts evil?
pin one. Yep, we do have five volts. Five volts are there. Hmm. We do have five volts. So this leads me to believe that there is something more that's busted on these connectors than the GND. Is the connector shield grounded? because I'm looking at a uh, connector uh, shield pad here and it looks like it's connected to GND. If it's grounded, I can make another jumper to ground, this time using this better uh, grounding. Nope. <laughs> Damn it. Let's do a continuity test. Yep. Okay, so let's see it. Well, GND is there. GND is getting continuity. By the way, uh, Evil, what's the uh, what's the GND pin on the microcontroller? like this LEDs here should at least the green or the, the, the red one should light up eight okay so my suspicion is that um, the Chino soldered something wrong here have continuity. 7 is 5. Okay, so let's connect it. Yeah, we're getting 5 volts. The 5 volts is there. Let me show you. I'm measuring 7 and 8 and it's giving me 5 volts so 5 volts is there definitely there what intrigues me though hmm. yeah I only can infer that something is not soldered properly here which is making this board not work although I have to figure out what that is. If we have 5 volts though, also 22 is tied to GND and 20 is tied to 5 plus. Okay, let's see. 
How many pens does this have? 22? Twenty-eight. So fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. Yep. Four volts. Five volts. The same old five volts. So everything points to five volts working. Uh, what I'm intrigued by though is the LEDs because these LEDs they should work. We should be seeing some LED action here. 28, yeah. The LED should be working, man. We are getting 5 volts. 5 volts uh, are getting to the uh, microcontroller and they are getting to the um, to the board. But uh, because if I test 5 volts and GND on the I2C pins here, I get 5 volts. So it's. Yeah. So. So this leads, this leads me to believe that there is something badly soldered here that won't make it work. By the way, this boot switch here, I don't want to play it, so I wouldn't know, but there is a boot switch here that's not soldered. Let me show you. See, you have the reset switch, which is here, and you have a boot switch. Is this boot switch supposed to be um, supposed to be soldered so the PCB can work. Because I'm afraid that microcontroller is here. Where are you seeing those files? Are those files available online, Evil? It just connects column 3 to GND. That's bad. Let's see. Here it is. So everything looks cool. I haven't downloaded. Okay, I found it. I found it. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, so I'm taking a look at this schematic. Okay, so the boot switch is just whatever. G4 and G5. Okay, so the two LEDs are not supposed to light up. They are connected to the I2C through J4 and J5. Um, so I really don't have a clue what's what's going on here. 
Everything leads me to believe that the... I did solder the connector correctly? Yes, I did. Uh, something leads me to believe that there is a problem with the connections that I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Nope, nothing. Nothing. What's wrong here, man? Something with pin 1 to reset or, or 4? Let's see. Um... So pin one is connected directly to. Hmm. I mean, the reset is soldered correctly. There's really no problem with it. The diodes look good. I think that there's a problem with D plus and D minus of the USB. In this case, let's see, where's the plus and D minus? So four and five, right? They go to, yeah, okay. So they go, they go to the plus and the minus through R2 and R3. Three. So we're R2 and R3. So let's see if the plus and the minus are working correctly. Chances are I'll need to um, I'll need to short those as well. I'm afraid that there is a data pin that's not correctly soldered. From the looks of it, the middle the middle pin, which is the plus, right? Yeah, pin three. Pin three, it looks busted, but on the other side. So maybe That's a bummer. No, it's not, man. No, it is not. We are going to find what's wrong and fix it. That's what we do here. We fix shit. We fix stuff.
No, they're not. They're soldered okay. I mean, if he didn't, let's let's think about it. The team is not here, but if he didn't, I, I'm waging. I wager that he didn't flash it. So that's why it's not working because he didn't flash it. So let's try flashing it. I think it's not working because it's not flushed. So we might be, uh, because all connections look good. I did test the minus and the plus, they look awesome. Uh, I tested uh, five volts, I tested ground, everything is good. Problem here is um, it's not working, but I think it is because uh, it was not flushed. Let's flush it. So uh, where is the Okay, so it's played. Okay, so I'm building the default firmware and now we need to flash it. The problem here is that I don't have two cables. Let me get another cable for this PCB. I don't have a second mini USB cable, but I do have an USB C an USB C keyboard. Let's use that one. Let me take Okay, so here you guys are. That reminded me, my QMK toolbox not working and me trying to flash on my Linux and forget to sudo at a terminal of like Awesome, that's 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 just uh, that's just normal man, don't sweat over it. Okay, so now I have my USB-C keyboard working and the plate and uh, what tool do I need to flash? Uh, AVR on Linux. It's generally we use. Uh, ah. Yeah, AVR, dude. Let me install it. Okay. 
Okay, awesome. So now I have to figure out which command I need to use to flash it. So this one is 32.8p, right? Yes, 32.8p. Uh, nope, nope, 32 8 P. Which option should I use for 3280p? Thirty two eight P, so it's eight M thirty two eight P. Do I need to specify about? I don't think so. Nope. U, big U, no, not big U, yep. Flash, right. No program has been specified. Which programmer should I use for 32.8p? It's the DFU, right? Which program should it be? USB ASP is that? Okay, let's see. No, that's not it. OK, 
Okay, so he does have <laughs> USB SP bootloader as a bootloader. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, the bootloader, um, the bootloader switch is needed. Is needed. Push and hold, reset. Yeah. So let's do this manually. He does need that. So push and hold, reset switch. Okay. Push and hold the boot switch. Okay, release, reset, release, boot. Awesome, now I can read it. Uh, and now I can flash it, I guess. Yep. Awesome, it flashed. It flashed, now reset. And let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's go. There we go, guys. It works. It works. And by the way, the LED is there. So, there we go, guys. Another day, another keyboard. Fixed. Gave me a lot of time, but it fixed. So yeah, I think we are pretty much done. Do you guys have any more uh, questions? Do you guys want me to show you guys anything more? Because I think you guys are tired. I, I am pretty much tired myself. Gondo, talk to me off stream after this, please. I want to send you money. Oh, awesome. I'm always up for receiving money. And... Okay, and nothing. So, yeah. So, guys, uh, I'm going to close stream right now. Uh, if you guys need anything more, um, you know, I'm always there on Discord. I've been away for some time now, uh, uh, and I'm taking a time for myself. Um, maybe I'll, 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 I'll be back in a week or maybe two weeks. I'm just taking some time off the hobby and some shenanigans. But, but anything that you guys need, just Discord me and... Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to close stream now. If you guys need anything more, this is the time.
Yep, I don't think so. Awesome. Okay, so goodbye, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.